Hello YouTube, this is Asatsu5 and uh, today I'm going to be reviewing the SOG uh, buoy. Um, this is the SOG buoy 2.0 and um, although I didn't get to use it for what I originally kind of got it for was kind of testing it as a hunting knife um, I did get a little bit of use with it as kind of a field craft knife and um, I believe I've handled this thing enough that I can actually talk about it now um, and uh, first off, the knife is a SOG. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, SOG originally stood for Studies and Observation uh, Group. It was a Special Forces team during Vietnam. Um, SOG, the knife company, is actually completely separate from the Special Forces Group. They're not one and the same. The SOG knife company started their business to um, uh, re recreate um, the Vietnam era knives uh, used by SOG and they have a pretty good lineup they have the SOG buoy, the SOG super buoy, the SOG d demo, the SOG agency um, and they're pretty much all fighting knives from the Vietnam era and uh, that's what the SOG company set out to do was to make modern uh, fighting knives that um, kind of a throwback to the Vietnam era. Um, so, uh, first off, let's get some stats out of the way. The overall length of this knife is 11 inches. The blade length is 6.4 inches. Um, the um, uh, handle material is stacked washers and um, it, the finish is a whole case black tie um, and um, it comes with a level sheath and we'll sh talk about the sheath later uh, first off um, uh, this is a very in my opinion very aesthetically pleasing knife and uh, far as use with this knife I'd say if you want to kind of if you have a study or um, um, you're just a military um, a historical fan of the military and you want to set up a little display maybe a little shadow box on your wall um, this would be a good knife just to hang up but um, we don't want to just hang up knives most of us who are either watching this video or, or planning on buying this knife want to know does it function and um, I'll say that the blade portion of this knife you know from heel to heel functions very well as um, a uh, fighting utility knife um, the point is very acute and uh, penetrates uh, material very easily uh, you get a little bit of belly so you do have that ability to skin um, or uh, process game when in the field and um, also has a very functioning guard to keep you from slipping out on the blade um, now you hold me say that the blade portion of this uh, knife functions very well well this is one of the biggest criticisms of this knife and that is the handle and it's not the fact that it's a stacked washer ha handle or stacked leather washer handle. Uh, to me it's a very attractive handle and I really like how it looks. But uh, you can see that they cut out these finger grooves in the handle and they are a complete miss when grabbing them. Uh, your fingers end up landing like kind of on the points and it really does an add in comfort with the grip. Um, you don't really get get any added comfort, not any added security as far as uh, gripping the handle with these gr grooves. And I find the only way I can actually put my fingers on the grooves is to hold it like this and place the tip of my fingers in each individual groove. But if you go and hold it in a conventional grip, it is a complete ergonomic miss. And this knife is going to feel very strange to you in your hand. Uh, that's just my mileage. Um, again, someone else might buy this knife and it might fit their hands. I don't know. But um, I've handed this knife to my um, brother. 
And um, he, I said, what is the first thing you notice when you hold the snuff? And um, he mentioned it's the handle. It's off. It does not feel good. It's not an ergonomic handle. So I, I really believe that SOG, the knife company, would do themselves a favor and not mill out these um, uh, finger um, grooves. Then I think they'd be a lot better off without it. Now, I did use this for some um, kind of field craft, you know, a little bit of carving, nothing in particular, just kind of um, using the knife and getting a feel for it. And I also use this knife as a draw knife to harvest pine knot shavings. Uh, some of you who are not familiar with pine knot, uh, it goes by many different names. It's called pine knot, rich lytle, um, fatwood. It's a um, very flammable um, pine wood. It's, uh, it's basically dead pine that um, the water was evaporated out, but it's very saturate, saturated in a pine sap. And you can take these shavings and use them with a ferrocean rod very effectively, or a lytle. Um, and um, they're very flammable. It's one of the best ways to start a file, in my opinion. It, it, it's the best. It's, to me, it's the best um, uh, tindle slash kindling you can use natural-wise. You know, those synthetics out there and accelerants you can use. But for something you can just go out in the woods and use, it's one of my favorites. Um, but, uh, yes, that's uh, um, basically... Uh, oh, yeah, I lost my uh, train of thought. Like I said, I was using this as a draw knife to harvest pine shavings or uh, pine knot shavings and this point would keep on digging into my um, palm and um, um, I think I made a video um, uh, showing my hand in a uh, you know a, a while back and um, you can see all the cuts and the blood coming out of my um, hand so I would not recommend using this as a draw knife if you could help it but that just goes to speak volumes of how um, acute this point is and how well easily it penetrates uh, flesh. So um, if you're looking for a knife that um, can one cut and two thrust, this is a good choice if you're able to get over these finger grooves. Now let's talk about the sheath. It's just a standard black leather sheath. This is um, a throwback to um, the Vietnam era, um, you know, and level sheets were quite common back in that time period. So, um, if you like this knife, but um, you don't like the level sheath, you want something that's a little bit more tactical, they do make um, um, a SOG buoy. I forget the name of it. Um, I think it's called the SOG Tech Buoy. And um, it's the same blade shape, uh, same gold, but instead of leather um, um, wa washers for the handle, it has um, some kind of synthetic handle, and it comes with a Kydex sheath, some kind of thermoplastic sheath. I think it's Kydex. Um, but um, I got this knife because I wanted a reproduction um, of a... Um, Vietnam era knife. At the time that I got this knife, I was kind of interested in collecting military knives and um, um, seeing the evolution of military fighting knives from um, World War II all the way up to Vietnam. And um, it's a very interesting history. Um, well, first off, if you want to study the um, World War II knives, they were just making that transition out of the trench knives and um, um, a lot of the um, uh, special forces performed daggles and you learn pretty quickly the limitations of daggles especially the Fairbairn Sykes daggles and daggles in general and um, you see this push towards fighting utility blades because this knife can do a whole lot more than what a, for example, a Fairbairn Sox knife can do. And that's why um, uh, these gained favor with um, uh, special forces 
um, teams uh, during Vietnam and it's the reason why the cable was popular during World War II with the Marines. You find out that um, I've talked to a few Marines in, in my life, uh, I've walked with one, and you find out that they're very practical people. And um, I might get into this subject on fighting knives uh, in a different video, but suffice it to say that um, the fighting utility knife was a great leap forward in um, personal gear fighting technology. Again, this is a level, black level sheath. It comes with a whetstone to sharpen in the field. Um, to me, I, I don't really use these. Um, not as my primary sharpening tool uh, so this gets little to no use but I feel that it's a great option to have if you're out in the woods and for whatever reason you get lost you do have a way to maintain your edge so to me that's a great advantage um, again um, this knife uh, I didn't get to use it as a hunting knife um, but um, just with a little bit of carving task and a um, um, little field craft holding the knife and um, you know just you know I guess you can say light use I didn't skin a deer with it like I wanted to I feel that this knife would be a whole lot better uh, a better using knife if it didn't have these grooves now I will say this the grooves do provide uh, indexing um, so if you're having to handle the knife at night when it's dark outside and low visibility you do know when you pick up the knife that okay uh, I can feel the grooves the blade is the edge is pointing down so I can do walk and um, that was one of the uh, disadvantages to the Fairbairn Sykes knife it was completely symmetrical all the way around and you really had no way of knowing which way the edge was pointing even though it was a double-edged knife and there was some really some horror stories uh, from uh, World War II of people trying to cut throats of centuries with the flats of the blade because they didn't know which way the edge was pointing um, but um, like I said that's for a separate video I can talk about the history between um, uh, military knives and how they progressed but um, all in all I'd say um, if you want this knife for as your um, fighting utility knife I'll definitely get the SOG Tech buoy I think is what it's called um, just because it has modern materials um, uh, synthetic grip um, Kydex sheath is going to be a lot more versatile than threading this through your belt um, but there's nothing wrong with this um, if you're a collector this is a nice knife it's a very attractive knife you can definitely set up a little uh, display with it um, but um, um, I would not call this you know I, I would not suggest it as a fighting utility knife um, for practicality reasons uh, just because of the traditional sheath um, like I said the um, blade portion of the knife is very effective and if you wanted a fighting utility knife I'll definitely go with the um, synthetic version of this knife with the synthetic handles and the um, um, in the sheath because a lot of people overlook the sheath when they're looking at um, um, fighting utility knives or um, go to war knives and um, depending on what you do if you're a scuba diver or if you're um, a, a pilot um, on a helicopter or airplane uh, certain sheaths are going to um, uh, work better for you than others and I think for a military knife the Kydex would be a better option for um, the majority of the military armed forces but th this is the knife um, let's see um, um, trying to find out um, uh, how much it cost 
Um, by the way, the blade uh, material is OS8, hardness uh, 57 to 58, and um, it weighs 11.20 uh, ounces. And I cannot find uh, the price. Okay, the MSRP price, price from the factory, is $248.50. So it is um, considerably more um, expensive than a K ball, but um, definitely a nasty blade to be on the receiving end of. I'm Asatsu5. I hope you enjoy this review, and I'm out.